Hey everyone, Jason here, digital marketing consultant, and in this Google Ads guide, you're going to learn how to build an optimized search campaign for your e-commerce store or driving leads to a service. So make sure you check out the timestamps below along with some other helpful videos and resources I'll be referencing as we go through this guide. Now, if you already have a Google Ads account set up and you don't need to understand how to skip through the Google Ads onboarding process, here's the timestamp to jump straight to the campaign build. And here's a quick overview of of the diagram we'll be going through in building out our campaign. So if you haven't already set up a Google Ads account, all you need to do is go to Google and search Google Ads and you're going to be able to find the Google Ads landing page where you can create your account. Wow, that was really revolutionary, right? So let's just go ahead and click on start now. Then go ahead and enter the email, login with the email, Gmail that you want to use for your business purposes. You can always give access to other accounts later or add people later. So so it's not like you're completely locked in here. And then we'll go ahead and click on next. I'll assume you've logged in. And what you want to do here is come down to the bottom and click on switch to expert mode. And the reason we want to do this is we want to skip all of the onboarding because what Google's going to try and do is force us to create a campaign right now, probably before we're ready, right? So we'll go ahead and click on switch to expert mode and then it'll take us to the campaign building interface because it really wants us to start spending that money. And we're just going to click create account without a campaign. And this will get you to a page that looks similar to this. You might be looking at your overview and depending upon your country and location and all that other fun stuff that Google keeps to themselves, you may be asked to enter your payment information. And so once you do, you're not going to be automatically charged. You're only going to be charged once a campaign is created and actually running. So don't freak out when they ask for credit card information. So let's go ahead and actually build out our first campaign now that we have our account set up. So all you need to do is come up to the left-hand side and click on campaigns. And then once you do, you can click this giant blue plus button and select new campaign. It will show load campaign settings if you've already created some campaigns in your account. So we'll go ahead and click on that and then we will click create campaign without guidance. You'll notice a trend here where we are always going to move away from Google trying to help us because in them helping us, they take away options and flexibility in the future. So we'll go ahead and click on create campaign without a goal. And then we will click on continue here. Of course, we want to create a search campaign. If you're interested in uh, how to set up video campaigns and YouTube ads campaigns here on YouTube, I'll link them in the cards in the description to a super deep dive video on that. So we'll go ahead and click on search. It'll ask for your website and you don't need to enter this. It's going to give you some keyword suggestions and 9.9 out of 10 times the keyword suggestions are so broad, they're not gonna be helpful. You don't want to, to uh, use those. So we'll go and click on continue here. We'll start by giving our campaign a name. I like having one product or offer per campaign. And so we'll just go ahead and name this uh, Fresh Kroner Watches because our example is going to be selling watches here. So next we're going to want to scroll down and uncheck display network. So we only want our ads to show up when someone is typing in something into a search box. Now you may see other videos that say to uncheck Google search partners. I found that it doesn't hurt the performance of the campaigns too much. And it just gives you some more options because a lot of the larger brands or larger companies don't like being on search partners. So it just gives you an opportunity to have your ads shown more places and of course, lower your cost per click. And as long as you've unchecked display network, you're probably going to be fine and just enjoy those lower cost per clicks. So let's go ahead and go down to show more settings here and we'll change our start and end dates. So this is something I always like to harp on. Go ahead and start, I like starting it on a Monday or a the next Monday or the next Thursday from whenever it is. Obviously we're way in the future on this one. And the reason I recommend doing that is so that you have plenty of time to get together whatever you need. And if something changes, you can immediately pause the campaign before it's actually started. So I'm just going to go ahead and leave it at next Thursday and in the future. <laughs> and then I'll select the end date to be two weeks later. Now I highly recommend start doing a start and stop date because Google will continue to spend your money till the end of time. So if you forget that you started a campaign or you forget to turn it off, well, you're, you're out of luck. You're not going to get that money back. I've had some, some really sad comments and it's just, you're, you're not going to win there. So make sure you always set an end date until you're ready for the, for the campaign to actually continue going. Of course, if it's your first campaign, just 
just do two weeks. And if you're using Google ads to generate leads for your business, then you might want to change the ad schedule. So your ads only run when your office is open or you're actually taking phone calls. For the most part, we tend to leave this alone. So I'm going to scroll down to targeting and audiences, and we're going to go ahead and select enter location and advanced search. And here we can be extremely detailed with where our ads are going to show up geographically. Now, when it comes to e-commerce, this is not going to be as a huge deal, but when you are setting up a leads campaign or you're a local based service provider or business, this is going to be very, very invaluable. So what you're going to want to do in either case is click on add locations in bulk. And now we can quickly talk about the way you can target different locations. So you really have four different options that I recommend going with. So if you're going to target countries, then you should only have countries in the list of targeting. If you want to target a specific country, then targeting all of the individual states, territories, provinces, or whatever those geographical areas are called in that particular country that you're targeting, that's what I recommend doing. And then of course, regional, if you're in a targeting a specific state, territory, or province, then go ahead and target cities, neighborhoods. And if you're a local services-based business, you maybe have a 25 to 50 mile radius that you actually do business in, then I'd recommend go ahead and actually using zip codes. And so whatever your targeting is, you'll go ahead and paste that in here to save me some time. I'm going to use our Google ads campaign builder and I already have a list of all of the 50 states for the US. So I'm just going to copy and paste them into this box here and I'll be able to click on search. If you wanna learn more about our campaign builder, it actually allows you to create all of your keywords and your ad groups and even all of your ad variations and upload them directly into Google. So you don't have to do all this copy paste stuff. I'll link that up in the description if you want to learn more and grab a copy of what we use. So we'll go ahead and click on target all here and you'll see that on our map to the right hand side, you'll see that all 50 states are highlighted. Now, why do we want to do this as opposed to just say US? Well, if we don't put in each individual, each, that's a weird way to say each, each. If we don't put in each individual state, then when we start running our traffic, all, the, all of our data is just going to show US one line. And when we do it this way, we'll be able to see a breakdown of our traffic via based on <laughs> based on each individual state. Okay, I'm getting tongue twisted. Let's go ahead and exit out of that. Took way too long there. So let's go ahead and scroll down here. Languages, I recommend leaving it to whatever the default is. Now this language should match whatever language your ads are in and whatever language your keywords are in. So it's pretty self-explanatory. You don't really need to have, I, I don't recommend having more than one language here um, because you don't want to assume that your customers are bilingual. So if your keywords are in English and your ads are in English, then go ahead and leave it English. If your keywords and ads are in a different language, then go ahead and use that language here for languages. So we'll go ahead and scroll down here. We'll skip audiences because audiences is great for display in YouTube, not search, not search. We always use keywords for search. Then for our budget, we do get a lot of questions about this. It, it really comes down to what you can afford. I recommend starting at $1,500 a month on average across all of your campaigns. Here, I'm just going to put $20 a day. I have seen campaigns go as low as $250 or $5 per day, but it just depends on your niche or industry, how much your cost per clicks are going to be. And of course, the lower your budget in the beginning, it just means the longer it's going to take to collect some data. It doesn't mean your campaign isn't going to work. And of course, Google will sometimes tell you, oh no, your budget's too low, you need to raise it. And that's just a suggestion. It's not a never a requirement to raise your budget in order for a campaign to, well, I should say it's almost never a requirement to raise your budget. I mean, if your budget's $5 a day and your average cost per click's $5 a day, well then you're in trouble. But for the most part, you don't have to raise your budget. So we'll go ahead, come down to bidding, and we're actually going to click on or select a bidding strategy not recommended because right now, it's going to use an automated bidding strategy. You don't want automated bidding strategies when you're just getting started because you have no baseline. You need a baseline in order for the Google algorithm to work or the black box that is Google optimizing to work. Now, the black box, I can tell you, works really, really well, but we have to spend a few thousand dollars before it actually works really well. Going, Doing it right out of the gate, not so much. So we'll go ahead and click on select others. And then we will come down here to manual CPC 
and we have to uncheck help increase conversions with enhanced CPC. So again, this is one area where we're saying, you know what, Google, no, 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 we, we got it, we'll, we'll do manual. And Google goes, okay, you could do it manual, but wait, 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 we have this one more, one more thing, one more thing, let's, let's do enhanced. And so please just make sure you uncheck enhanced. What enhanced does is it, it allows Google to change your manual cost per click to help optimize your clicks and, and uh, what they think is going to be conversions. But again, without a baseline, the algorithm has nothing, I keep saying algorithm, but I should just say the, the black box that goes on with the op, your campaign optimization, it doesn't have enough data to make good decisions. And so we need manual CPC. I've seen some, some accounts where this was left checked and even though the manual CPC was $3, it was spending four to seven. So definitely make sure it's unchecked. All right, well, we'll move, we'll move on here. And it's, of course, it's saying your performance is going to be lower. Just ignore that. Just ignore it. You can always add money later, right? It's kind of a conflict of interest. I'll get off that. Let's go ahead and show, show more settings. Ad rotation. Here's another place where we need to force Google to do what we actually need to want to get that baseline. So we'll go and click on ad rotation. And I'll leave conversions for a separate, much deeper dive video. So link in the cards in the description to a video that goes over an hour long that even goes through how to create your remarketing campaigns and a Google Tag Manager tutorial as well. So you know how to set up those conversions, have them firing on your site correctly. For ad rotations though, we do not want to optimize. So. Here's another problem that we find when you don't have a baseline, right? So let's say you have three ads and you're spending 20 to 20 to uh, 50 bucks over the week, right? And you come into you come into your campaign and you see you got 100 clicks, awesome. But for some reason, out of your three ads, Google gave 80 clicks to the first one and then 20 to the second and 20 to the third or 10. I could do math, 10 and 10. <laughs> oh my gosh, 10 clicks and 10 clicks. And you go, well, why wouldn't, how, how did it know after 10 clicks of the first two ads that the, the, the ad that got 80 clicks was actually going to be the best one? And the answer is we, we don't know. And after spending over 800K in ad spend over the last couple of months, we still have not been able to figure out what on earth the formula is. So make sure you rotate ads evenly. So when you go in at the end of the week, all hundred of those clicks are spread evenly throughout those three ads. And so you really know which one's working because if we don't check this, you're going to have campaigns where 80 clicks goes to one ad, 20 clicks goes to the other two. Yes, I could do some math. And it's just not going to, you, you can't compare 20 clicks to 80. It's just, it's just apples and oranges at that point. All right, there we go. So we're going to skip ad extensions. We'll get to that at the end. So timestamps, if you want to jump to that and we'll go ahead and click on save and continue. And we're ready for our keyword targeting. So this is where we're going to tell Google how we want, when we want, not how, when we want our ads to show up. We've already told them how. And so if we're going back to our diagram here, we've created our campaign, set all those settings and now it's time for our ad groups. So I like thinking of ad groups as groups of people that you want your ads to be shown to. And of course, again, timestamps below to skip around, especially if I'm uh, ranting way too much on uh, Google trying to be helpful. So we'll go ahead and click on save and continue here. And you'll go ahead and give your ad group a name and set a default bid. I tend to just go with a default bid of two. You may go through this entire process and Google will tell you your default bid is too low. Whenever Google tells you that, you can still make the campaign and you can still try running ads. And so you don't have to increase it in order for the campaign to work. It's something that can get a little confusing. So we'll come down here and we need to paste in our keywords. Now I'll link up in the cards in the description to a full blown deep dive video on how to use the keyword planner to find keywords. You don't need fancy software here. So I'm going to jump over to our Google ads campaign builder. Like I said, you don't need fancy software. And then I go to one of our tools, <laughs> real hypocritical, right? So we're going to copy our first set of keywords and then paste them in. And then we're going to copy our second set of keywords and paste them in. So when it comes to keywords, of course, you do have some match types and I recommend using phrase match and exact match only. Number one, because broad match is going to get you way too many unaffiliated clicks and people who aren't a good fit for your product or service. And exact match isn't actually exact match anymore. So you just want to be very, very focused with telling Google when you want your ads to show up. So please, please, please never use broad match. You'll get a bunch of warnings saying that there's not enough traffic, your bids are too low, the keywords are too narrow, that's okay. 
you'll you can always increase budgets you can always try new keywords later so we'll go ahead and go make another two camp we're making three camp ad groups total oh my gosh and we're going to go ahead and make two more ad groups so i'll scroll down here i'll just click on create ad group we'll go ahead and give our ad group a name men's watch plus best under we'll set the default bid to two and then we'll go ahead and just paste in our keywords i'll do this one more time new ad group name the ad default bid and then paste in our keywords. Again, uh, link in the cards in the description to that really long Google Ads tutorial that goes through how cho we chose these keywords as well as the keyword planner so you know how to actually find your keywords. And once we have our two match types in here, you'll notice that I don't have any more than seven keywords per ad group. I recommend not having more than seven unique keywords. And so you'll have seven for phrase match and you'll have seven for exact match. Now it's time to create our ads. Now, when it comes to writing ads, it could be a video twice as long as this, and we actually have a full-blown course on it. But when it comes to ad copywriting for your first time, all you need to do is evaluate what your competitors are doing. And keyword being evaluate and not copy. So here's a quick rundown of the characters and components that you have for your ads and we will go through call out extensions and site links in the last section of this training. So let's go ahead and jump to an example here. You can always use the timestamps to pause, but this is what I recommend doing when you search a keyword that you're targeting, go and take a screenshot and start deconstructing your competitors' ads to figure out what they are promising, what the features and benefits are of whatever they're offering, and of course, how they're handling objections and if they have any social proof as a part of their ad. Ad. So you can learn a lot, but please, please, please deconstruct and then make your own. Don't copy. If you want more help with this, I'll link up in the description to our Google ads copywriter course that takes a really deep dive into the psychology of copywriting and how to actually write great Google ads. So let's go ahead, jump back into the interface here and we will click on save and continue. And the first thing we want to do when we come to the ad section is click switch back to text ads. Because what we're looking at right now, if I were to scroll down, you would just enter a bunch of headlines and Google's experimenting with this thing right now called responsive text ads, where it's going to rotate different headlines and different descriptions, trying to find the best combination. And once it does, it'll run that combination and we will have no idea which combination is actually the best. So as uh, on trend, we're going to control what we have here. So we're going to go ahead and click on switch back. And then I'm going to jump over to my cop copywriter here. I have some headlines already set up. So I'll copy my headlines and I will paste them in here. So we have headline one, two, and three. Keep in mind that three most of the time will not show up and you'll see in the preview, it's not actually showing three. And then I'll jump back over to my copywriter again. I'll copy the two descriptions and the URL paths, and then I'll go ahead and paste them in. And we have a mobile preview of what the ad might look like. Again, link in the description if you wanna learn more about how to actually do all of the copywriting. So what I recommend doing is going through this at least two to three more times so you have a couple of ads to evenly rotate through. Now for time purposes, I'm just going to do one more. So we'll go ahead and click on done and create next. And then we'll just speed through the process of pasting in. And now we have our second ad. Now, when it comes to setting up your Google ads here in this interface, you're going to scroll down and you're going to see that it's going to ask you to do this for every single ad group that you created. Please don't do that. We can just copy and paste the ads that we already made into our ad groups later. So you only have to enter your ad in once using this, right? So we'll go ahead and click on done instead of create next or going to the next ad group. And then you're going to scroll all the way down and click save and continue. So there's two ad groups right now where we have not made any ads. So we'll go ahead and click on save and continue here. And once we do, we can hit publish. And now our campaign is is scheduled because we scheduled it for a week out, but essentially it's live almost ready to go. You'll be taken to the overview page. And of course you can scroll down and look at all of your location targeting and the different ads that you have. Data will start to come in once this campaign is live. So what we're going to do now is come over to all campaigns. So I'm gonna click on all campaigns here and this is going to be the, your top account view. And so you can see here on the left-hand side, our navigation, we could click on overview to see how all of our campaigns are doing. 
I'm currently in campaigns and the campaign home and a long list of all the campaigns that you have created will be here. And you can actually filter by removed, by paused, by active. So I've filtered all but the removed ones right now. And if you want to get back into your campaign, all you need to do is click on the campaign name. And now you'll see where all campaigns, the campaign that we just created, how many times am I gonna say campaign in 90 seconds? <laughs> okay, I've done. And you'll see the ad groups. Now we'll just start saying ad groups, right? And you'll see all the ad groups that we've created. Now there's one more step before we can go live. And that is copying the two ads that we made over to the two ad groups that we skipped during the campaign setup process. So here's how to do that. We will start inside of our campaign and we're actually going to come to ads and extensions. So once we click ads and extensions, you'll see the two ads that we created and you'll see that they're only for the men's watch ad group, the very first one, because we skipped the next two. So all we need to do is select all of them and then you can either go to this drop down and select copy or you can go command C on a Mac, control or control C on Windows and copy them and then we'll unselect them here and then this paste icon will show up and once we click paste, this dialog box will pop up. We'll be able to select our campaign. You can see we have some other examples for this demo account and then select the two ad groups that the ads were not created for. And then we can go ahead and click on done and we will just click on paste. And now you can see that we've pasted those two ads to the other two ad groups. So we didn't have to type in the same ad three or four times for each individual ad group. We can just copy and paste them. And now we have all of our ads set up, all of our ad groups set up, and our campaign is scheduled and ready to go. So now let's talk about site links because this is a really awesome thing that you can do to increase the real estate of your ad. And there's really no penalty for doing it. And Google just decides when the site links show up. So you might as well have them there just in case you get lucky and Google decides to use site links. So here's what we're going to do. We're going to add site links to the campaign. You can actually have site links at the account level, so they apply to all your campaigns, although I don't recommend that because it's super easy to forget that a site link says one thing and an ad says another and then they start to conflict. But anyway, I'll get off that. Let's go ahead and jump out to all campaigns here. So I'll click on all campaigns. So we're looking at, we're at the account level now. We we're no longer in the campaign level and we'll come over here to ads and extensions and we'll be able to add some site links once we click on extensions. So I'm in extensions right now, not ads. So once we're in extensions, we can click this blue plus button. And as you can see here, there are a lot of options. We're only going to go through two. So we will start with the site link extension, and this is good for all business types. And we will add to not account, but in a campaign. So we'll click on the campaign that we want and we'll go ahead and click on done. And this way the site links will apply just to this campaign. Now, if we create a campaign in the future and we find that we want these site links to apply to that campaign as well, we can go ahead and make that selection. You can have them for multiple campaigns, although I always recommend making sure that they are selected for individual campaigns, not the account level. All right, I'll stop repeating myself there. Let's go ahead and create a new site link. I'm gonna jump over to our copywriter real quick, just for time purposes, copy our site link text and paste it in. And then we'll go ahead and paste in at least three more. So you want a total of four site links at least. If you have more than four, then Google's just going to choose what site links show up and rotate them as they see fit. There's not very much control you have over here when as opposed to when setting up the campaign, we could really have a lot of control. So we'll go ahead and click on save. And as you can see on the preview here, this is just adding extra links to your ad that people can click on and on desktop the description lines might show up as well so we'll go ahead and click on save and if we click on table we're in ads and extensions and we're filtered by site link we'll click on table and now we can see a full-blown pre mobile preview of what our ad looks like you can check out the preview on desktop as well you'll see we have our normal ad text and our third headlines actually showing up in this preview. And then we have the site link extensions below. What's also nice about this is this URL that the ad goes to can be different than what the individual site link 
URLs are. So site links are a great way to segment your traffic very quickly and can help you give some insights as to what people are actually interested in. So here we have custom engraving 2020 one watch style and chrono black collection so we can start to learn about which collections or if people care more about custom engraving right so let's go ahead and go back over to summary and now we're going to add our call out extensions to our ads so back into the interface here we'll click on summary and then we will click on the plus button again but this time we will go to call out extensions now unlike site links call out extensions are not links they're just call outs <laughs> What a silly thing to say. All right, let's click on our campaign again. We've got our campaign selected. We'll go ahead and click done. And then I've just gone ahead and pasted in some callouts. And so what's great with callouts is to just have features like limited limited lifetime warranty, perfect fit guide, custom engraving, free returns. And there might be some overlap with what you decide to do with your site links. And again, it's up to Google whether or not these show up, if they show up with the site links, without the site links. And so you just want to add these because there's no downside to having this option. And Google will just give you more real estate when it thinks it's best for the searcher. So. That does it for our preview here. So we'll go ahead and add a call out extension here. So we'll add two more, three day shipping and gift wrapping. Maybe that's really important. So we'll go ahead and click on save. And again, when you're going through your competitors ads, this is something else that you want to look for. And we'll click on table and we'll be able to see a list of all of our call out extensions for this particular campaign. And we can go ahead and click on X. And now we're looking at all of our extensions across our entire account. And that's why you can see added to and the campaign name here. And so that's all there is to it to setting up your first Google ad search campaign. Make sure you hit that like button, subscribe for more deep dive tutorials on traffic and conversion, just like this one. And make sure you check out that link to the Google ads campaign builder. It's a tool that we've built out over years upon years of having to do these over and over again for clients. And hopefully it can save you a bunch of time in setting up your future campaigns as well. So until the next, keep building the business you love.